Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech. And over the past week, we heard from Apple regarding their earnings from the past few months. Also, we may see a third party app store sooner than we thought, as well as iOS updates are expected this week. This is your news update for the week of May 2nd, 2022. And the first thing is, if you use a Roku streaming box instead of maybe an Apple TV, starting today, Apple Music is now part of the platform. So you can now install Apple Music and listen to it on a Roku if you have one of those. Apple is making this more widely available starting today. So you can see that here from the Roku blog, and I'll link that in the description if you want to check it out. So if you have a Roku box, you can now use Apple Music. Now, Apple announced their revenue for the past quarter, and it's huge again. It's actually another record-setting revenue, with the exception of iPads. iPads had some supply constraints, according to Tim Cook, and that's why they couldn't meet the revenue of last year. But they sold $50 billion worth of iPhones, $7.6 billion worth of iPads, $10.4 billion worth of Mac, and $19.8 billion on services. So they made a huge amount of money, and then, of course, it's less than that after they pay all their bills, but that's still a huge amount. And it's a record setting year over year quarter with the exception of iPad, which is about 0.2 billion down. So a couple hundred million dollars down, but still a huge amount of money. Now, Apple has also started to manufacture the iPhone 13, but not the 13 mini in Brazil. A couple of weeks ago, they started manufacturing iPhone 13s in India as well as a way to help diversify the supply chain away from China, where maybe different things and situations there are causing production to slow and maybe difficult to get. So hopefully we'll see that more diversified around the world fairly soon, but it looks like they're starting to do that in India and now Brazil. Last week, Apple told developers that if they have an app that's over three years old that has not been updated and fails to meet the minimum download threshold, they would start removing them from the App Store. Quite a few developers were a bit upset about this, and Apple was only giving them 30 days to update their apps. Apple has now extended that to 90 days. So the, the apps will still have to be updated, whether that be for security reasons, privacy reasons, and more. But hopefully we'll see more and more apps stay as the developers update them. If not, we'll see those leave the App Store. Apple is planning a new $1 billion campus in the Research Triangle in the Raleigh, North Carolina area. Apple plans to renovate an existing MetLife building and more, which has already been approved. So it looks like they're going to start building that very soon and renovating that MetLife building to match what the Apple campus looks like. Once that's complete, that's only a few hours from where I am. I'll have to go over and take a look at it if I can. The EU continues to try and force Apple to change the way it's operating, and this time they're now objecting to limiting third-party apps to accessing Apple's Pay NFC capabilities. Meaning when you go up to maybe pay with your iPhone, you just tap your phone to pay, that's only limited through Apple at this point. They wanna open this up so that it's available more across different apps. This seemingly is a little bit premature as in iOS 15.5, they may be opening that up even more. So we'll have to see how this plays out. A couple weeks ago, I also mentioned how the EU was trying to force them to allow third-party app stores. So you would, instead of going to the app store, maybe you would go to Safari, install the app there or through a website like you do on a Mac. The US government and Japan are now investigating whether or not sideloaded apps or third-party app stores should be forced on Apple. So so this is something that we're seeing more and more. And we saw this years ago with Microsoft, with Windows, and it looks like now they're going after Apple for the same thing. So where we can install apps separately using a Mac, using Safari, or a different web browser of our choice, we may be able to do that very soon on an iPhone. Now that's something that of course is optional. You wouldn't have to do that, but I'm curious what you think about it. Should they have to allow this or should they just be allowed to operate as normal? Apple launched its self-service repair program last week. I went over it in a separate video, but you can see it at selfservicerepair.com. This allows you to buy tools and parts and see manuals for iPhones, but currently it's only iPhone 12 and newer. Hopefully we'll see some older iPhones soon, and Apple has said that they're going to support M1 or Apple Silicon-based Macs later this year. So we'll see that and then see that roll out across Europe as well, hopefully Canada and more. But they haven't given time frames on that. But if you want to try and repair your display or other internal parts, such as the Taptic Engine, you can actually go and order parts. Some of them are very reasonable. So if you go to iPhone, maybe iPhone 13, and maybe you just need a new SIM card tray, 
maybe you lost yours when you were changing it, you can buy that for $7.20. Some parts are even cheaper, such as little screws to assemble the iPhone, such as the pentalobe screws at the bottom of the iPhone. Those are as cheap as 20 cents. So you could do that, rent tools to repair your phone and more, but at least we have the manuals for them as well. Some Mac studio owners are now complaining of a high pitched noise or whine coming from the fan area on the back. There's an exhaust port on the back and it sounds like this on my Mac studio. However, the Mac studio doesn't make a lot of noise or a high pitch whine for me. So that could be either the fans or the power supply, but either way, hopefully mine doesn't make that noise in the future. But if it's the fans, Apple could also change the speed of them, maybe to quiet it down a little bit, but you do hear fan noise from it if it's nearby. Also, if you have a studio display, Apple released some firmware to fix some of the issues they were having with the camera this past week through a beta update. This is something that they've been talking about for a while. The camera itself is not that great, and it looks like the firmware update didn't really fix it a whole lot. However, it is in beta form, and in order to try that firmware on a Mac Studio display, you need Mac OS 12.4 Beta 3, and then you can install it. So since we're still not at the final version, they could improve it further and look for feedback with that. So hopefully we'll see a better update in the future. This past week, Apple updated AirTags to version 1.0.301, which allows for better notification sounds, better volume. So if you're trying to locate something with an AirTag, you should be able to hear it a little bit better. However, if you're trying to update them, you'll just have to wait as this sort of rolls out on its own. There's no way to force this. And so far, all of my four AirTags have not updated. So you can't update them similar to how you can with AirPods. There's just no way to sort of force that update. So you'll just have to wait, but over the next couple of weeks, they should update on their own. Now we also had iOS 15.5 betas this past week. We had a week over week release, meaning beta three was one week after beta two, meaning that I expect iOS 15.5 beta four as soon as tomorrow. Tomorrow or Wednesday seems likely since we're now on a weekly schedule. Apple of course could change this, but it seems very likely that we'll have it on Tuesday or Wednesday where we'll have weekly releases until the release candidate and final release, which I now expect toward the end of May. So that's what I expect with that. I've sort of given up on a public release where I expected iOS 15.4.2. There's definitely security reasons they could update it and maybe we'll see it this week, but there's no real hint that they're going to push this out despite them no longer signing iOS 15.4. So meaning you can no longer downgrade to iOS 15.4. So we could see a public release any day this week, or maybe they're just waiting for iOS 15.5 and iOS 16 is only about a month away at this point until we see beta one on June 6th. At WWDC 2022, the Worldwide Developer Conference, we'll see iOS 16 beta 1 and then iOS 15 betas as well, all the way until September, where they release it usually in the middle of the month. So all of those are coming very soon. Of course, I'll keep you updated as soon as they're released. Now, before we talk about rumors and different things that have been leaked, I wanted to talk about different deals that are now available starting today that are on Amazon that are actually directly from Apple, but are pretty good deals at this point. So there's a lot of AirPods deals right now. So AirPods two are down to $99. You've got AirPods three down to $169 AirPods pro at $174.99 AirPods max are the biggest discount down to $449. And even iPad mini is down to $399. Now these are affiliate links. I'll link in the description. So I will get a portion from that. If you purchase one of those, if you don't want to use those, just search for the actual product on Amazon and you'll be able to buy it from there. But either way, all of those are a pretty good deal, especially the AirPods Max if you've been wanting to get some of those. When it comes to future iPhones, glass from the upcoming iPhone 14 models showed up on Weibo last week, showing the different size models and that Apple is planning to keep the notch on the iPhone 14 and 14 Max models. There is no 14 mini, just as many predicted, and the Pro models seem to get a new pill and hole punch display. So on the Pro and Pro Max models, we'll see that new display where they get rid of the notch. So I'm curious what you think of that new design. Is it something you like, or would you rather just have a notch or hopefully just no notch at all? Also iPhone 14 plus could be making a comeback as far as that name goes with iPhone 14 and 14 plus, and then iPhone 14 pro and iPhone 14 pro max. So those names could be coming back. I'm not sure if that's hundred percent, but it looks like they're at least considering different names for the upcoming iPhone. Mac Atacara also posted iPhone 14 mockups showing online last week that they have a very similar design to the iPhone 13 devices. So we're not going to get four different cameras like we have on this sort of prototype 
dummy unit that's actually an Android phone, but we're not going to have four cameras. We'll have three cameras again, very similar to what we have on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. However, they do seem to protrude out from the back a little bit more than they currently do. So they stick out a little bit more, making the phone potentially a little bit thicker this time around if you count the camera bump. So it looks like it's going to be very similar in some ways, but different when it comes to the display. When it comes to the next generation Apple Watch, according to Quo Ming Chi, the Series 7 was originally intended to include a body temperature monitor. However, it was skipped due to problems with the overall programming algorithm to measure that temperature. Apple is believed to have resolved the issues and is planning to include it in the Series 8 Apple Watch if they've already figured out that algorithm. So we could see that this year with new temperature diagnostics where it can measure your skin temperature or your body temperature through a sensor on the back of the watch. So nothing really revolutionary unless they changed the design last year a lot of different leakers got this very wrong so it makes sense that maybe we'll see something that we didn't expect this time around Apple is still working on an AR or VR headset or a mixed reality headset and that could be announced as soon as this year and recently patently Apple uncovered a patent showing that they're working on a wireless charging stand for it so you need some way to charge it and it looks like you would just set it on this stand and then it would charge wirelessly they also found a patent that they're working on a display system to have a one-way mirrored surface. So maybe something to do with the displays where they could change those based on what you're doing with them. So all of those things have recently surfaced as far as the patents, and hopefully we'll see much more of that later this year. And so that's everything for the news this past week with different deals and things and more. Let me know what your favorite part of these news updates are. And if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. Of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.